This past June marked the 90th anniversary of the first attempted solo flight around the world. And today we celebrate the life and legacy of Jimmy Mattern. Joining me now to discuss more is his granddaughter, author, and public speaker, mm -hmm. Shelby Joy Scarborough. Shelby, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun to hear you say his name, the life <laughs> and legacy. I got all excited all of a sudden. <laughs> well, I just think it's such an amazing story. Mm -hmm. And thank you for sitting on the couch with us today to talk about your grandfather. But maybe for our viewers who have never heard of Jimmy Mattern, can you give them an overall view of who he was? Sure. He was probably most well known for being the first man to attempt to fly solo around the world. You know, we get in a plane all the time now uh -huh. and jump on a plane and go around the world pretty easily these days. But when you're sitting in a little teeny cockpit with about, you know, a, a plane that's made of paper and, and, a, and a one propeller and one engine, it's pretty scary stuff. So pretty uh -huh. brave. Yeah, I would imagine. He, he absolutely was brave because I literally was picturing, picturing that in my head, as you said, and I'm like, it takes a brave person to do something like that. But you know, you mentioned how he attempted to do this. Yes. What exactly does that mean, Shelby? Well, he got almost all the way around the world. You know, he, he, it wasn't nonstop. It was the first to fly solo. So he stopped in Norway and refueled, and there's some fun stories there. Then he went on into Russia. And as he got over into some of the more desolate places in Russia, some of the oil that he'd got picked up along the way mm. kind of clogged up his engines. Wow. And sent him down on the ground in the tundra of Siberia, if you can imagine being in such a desolate place. Oh my goodness, I can't. It, it's kind of scary to imagine <laughs> that he did all of these things by himself. But really, what would you say is the highlight of that journey when he did end up getting stuck over in that area? What, what does that say about his story? Well, we always know who actually accomplished the goal, you know? Mm -hmm. Wiley Post is the man who first flew around the world solo, who was his friend. Mm -hmm. But the story of Jimmy Mattern is really one of perseverance and grit and guts and courage. And the idea that we can overcome some of those things is pretty amazing to me. If he could do it, we can do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, some of the problems we face in our daily lives are nothing compared to what he had to overcome. Being alone on the tundra for weeks wondering if he'd ever be found. You know, there was no communication, no cell phones, mm -hmm. no video games. Today's National Video Game Day. Yeah. Certainly no video games to keep him company. <laughs> and in the meantime, he had to figure out how to find food. And he, he only took little bits of food because there really wasn't much uh, room in the cockpit for him. So he had a couple of chocolate bars and an orange. Oh, my goodness. This story is just so incredible. And you being his granddaughter, I know it must just be so special uh, to be able to help tell his story. But you're holding a book right yeah. now. It is called Undaunted. Yes. And this is actually based off of his own journals, isn't That's it? That's correct. He wrote very uh, prolific diary. He was, he was very detailed in how he explained everything. And what we did is we asked, a, a writer, Bill Simpson, to take that story, to take that first person account and turn it into sort of a novel. So it reads like it's a Ludlam novel, a mystery, an adventure, mm -hmm. but it's re it's all true. And that makes, you know, truth better than fiction. It really does. And you being his granddaughter, you and the rest of his grandchildren kind of came together to make this happen. Why was that so important to the family to kind of live on with his legacy? Well, he was all of our grandfather, not just my grandfather. So yeah. we wanted to come together as a group and really push this forward to, to expand his legacy to beyond the history books, to bring him back to life because he's such a great example of the perseverance and the fortitude that we need to accomplish our goals. His story is under told and yet he's, he's an amazing individual and we have so many things out there that aren't true that are going on and this is truth. This is absolute fact and is something that's inspirational. So we wanted to highlight that and celebrate him. That's amazing that the, the whole family came together too to celebrate celebrate him and really allow his legacy to live on. Such a beautiful thing. We, we briefly mentioned Undaunted, but what is truly behind the pages of this book if someone were to pick it up? So it's the account of his whole life, not just the one flight that made him most famous. You know, he went on to become very instrumental in World War II, uh, working for Lockheed and developing out the P-38 bomber, which was very instrumental in World War II. And so he was what they call an engineering test pilot. So he would not just take and sign off on a great plane. He worked with the engineers and flew out in something they didn't even know would fly. And he'd come back Aww. and tell them how to tweak it and make it all the better for everybody so that all the pilots that were out there fighting for uh, the cause would be safe and sound. And so those were just some of the things that he did. He had an amazing life and all of that is included in here. And what did you learn, would you say, Shelby, from your own grandfather, maybe things you didn't know or didn't realize after reading his diary or putting together this book? He, um, 
he probably crashed more times than anybody ever. We don't have official confirmation of that, <laughs> but I think that he probably has a world record in crashing and, and getting back up again. So from a life lesson for me, you know, if he can crash seven times and get back up eight, I can I can pick myself up when I have a bad day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's just, just an amazing spirit and an amazing guy to teach us how to persevere in anything that we want to do. That's so beautiful. And when people do pick up the pages of Undaunted and learn and read about your grandfather, what are you hoping that they really take away mainly from his message and from the book itself? Sure, you know, he was a pioneer in his field, but we can all be pioneers. We can all look ahead, and pioneers are really only people who are dreamers who actually put something into action. They actually do what they dream about. Mm -hmm. So, so much of us can dream. I know I'm somebody who has lots of ideas, but it's in the execution that really counts, Yeah. and he's a great example of that. Yeah, I believe it. He really is a great example of that, and we're so glad that you came on the show today and shared a little bit of his story. But moving forward, what is next? What's next for the family, and how do you hope to continue to celebrate celebrate the life of your grandfather? Well, we've been going around to the different places that he touched down, so to speak. So Floyd Bennett Field, we just went to to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the takeoff. That was in New York. Uh, last year, we went to Norway, where he first touched down, and we met amazing people who were related to the people who helped our grandfather and really? learned even more than we knew when we wrote the book. Wow. And next year, we go to Berlin, and we really want this to be made into a movie. So if anybody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hint, if you're listening yes. out there, this is your first clue. you got to make this into exactly. a movie. Well, I have to ask, since you've kind of visited some of the spots that are w within the book, what's been your favorite? Well, f you know, meeting the little girl who sold lemonade on the side of the road on a small island in Norway where he landed because he'd run out of gas and he had to land on a rocky beach, which is actually on the cover of the book. Yeah. And having her come up to us later, realize who we were. Are you the people who went to the landing site of the aviator who flew here 90 years ago? Now, she's like 10, so she obviously wasn't How? around. And she said, we are family. And that was the spirit, I just have chills, the spirit yeah. of the connection that brings us together by going out and retracing the steps of our grandfather has brought us into the lives of many, many people that we never would have encountered before, people who are now impacted by him in a new way. Oh, my goodness. You are giving me the chills right here <laughs> on this couch. I could, I could see the emotion, the passion for this. Mm -hmm. One more before I let you go, Shelby. What are you hoping that the legacy and the life of your grandfather, Jimmy Mattern, leaves on this world? You know, we have so, so much trauma and tragedy and, and difficult times that we're living through. And I just want people to know that there's hope and that without a dream, we're kind of lost. And this, yeah. he had a dream and he went out and did it. And whether he succeeded in it or not is really irrelevant. He brought hope at a time of the depression. He brought hope to the American people and to the world. Everybody was watching when he took off. And we can all do that in our own way. Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you're you bringing so much. hope to so many people. <laughs> I, you're making me a little emotional, but I really appreciate you just sharing this story thank and you. everything that your grandfather did. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Oh, now I'm a little beclimped. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right.